Lucas. Okay. Come on. Like that's food. Wait. No, oh, I can still check, check. I can still feel the energy back here. It's like good. It's gonna come in and get all this energy. Oh, that was beautiful. Is everyone present right now about like what just happened? Like all these beautiful people are here for you and for all of us. They have just so much information, so much knowledge, just so much grit. There's so much talent and energy all here for all of us. Oh, and we still have a show going. Um, I got a brother. Everyone give a, a big love to um, this artist, humanitarian, activist, Luke Colin. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna play a video of an up-and-coming movie. It's a documentary. It's a spoken word, um, and he's gonna tell you about this. Beautiful brother, known him for a while. I haven't worn this like in years. I bought this from him from Peru uh, that he got. He, he's a, he has an ancient heart, and uh, he's gonna give you some love, all right? Aloha. Uh, thank you, John. What's up, everybody? So can I just get a uh, show of hands if you guys are excited to reclaim individual and planetary sovereignty just by a show of hands? Okay, cool. So, I'm, a pas I'm passionate about where the individual path co connects with the we, where the I meets the we. I think this is the cutting edge of our time. What you're about to see is a spoken word piece that I shot in Bali during the pandemic with my brother Ike Darvo, who's a B-list celebrity on Netflix, and shot by my brother Pete Longworth, who's worked with a lot of really uh, renowned authors and speakers. Uh, this is an unreleased piece, so you're seeing it here first before it goes live on the 22nd this month, okay? So thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, just inviting a moment of presence to receive this piece of art. So, yeah, thank you so much. Turn the volume up, please. Fact check your fact checkers. Oligarchies have been playing chess, not checkers. Follow the money. Fact check on record. Fact check big media, big pharma, big tech. All weapons, overwhelming evidence, inconvenient truths like Building 7 and 9-11, victims made wrong while politicians and celebs stay glorified among systems still oppressive. The rules don't really apply to them. Social media snatching attention, bipartisan politics funneling our focus into polarized segments like two sports teams playing under the same management. Alternative narratives offering a perspective, illuminating the potential for insidious agendas, get written off as conspiracies. It's like we got a compound fracture inside of our society. Both sides are perceiving harm, and a new epidemic is born, the loss of empathy or mutual regard. A person's lived experience is as sacred as their own relationship with God. Yet this clash made a line in the sand, one big worldview war. So much chaos got the masses begging for a new world order. People shifting into Agent Smith's defending the matrix. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Got fluoride in their water and poison in their food. All opposing beliefs are just the point of view. Whistleblower journalism fading like indigenous languages so the people turn to propaganda push and that's on both sides. One's just more socially acceptable than the other. People caught in the crossfire don't know what to do or believe, and that's when hope dies. Families ripped apart, communities splintered, fighting for beliefs so strong and obviously they're the one who's most informed. No more public forums, just a place of shame and scorn. No more discussions, critical thinking, or the art of debate. Just a whole lot of wrong making, a whole lot of blame. Defended, righteous, divided states. Are we awake or in a trauma state? Triggered planet twilight zone episodes, global phenomena, Earth, a place called home, the unvaxxed with feelings surfacing similar to Jews in World War II. Oh, don't you even compare that? Wouldn't you care that? There's another version of dehumanization happening, polarization. Nobody likes to feel that. No circumstance should ever justify it. 
kind of hard to see when you're in it. The shadow of pain and fear cast upon your neighbor's back, sanctioned toxicity and personal attacks. And who am I to choose if what I choose goes against the president? And when did so many liberals opt in for censorship when they're supposed to be the protagonists, protectors of free speech, please? You're now bad for not doing what we say. Shut up, obey. It's safe, just take it. It's safe, just take it. On repeat. Don't trust what we say? On repeat. Don't want to trust what we say? Okay, now you can't play. We'll restrict your basic need for connection, ability to provide for your family, or travel freely. Tribalism and ostracization, black sheep of the family forced deeper into isolation. But no, it's not political. And how dare you for being defiant? You're risking lives by being alive. My body, my choice, my bloodstream, our rivers, her waters, natural medicines, cures that take time. We're never rushed like the seasons, but y'all want an endless winter and winter's coming. That brings flu season. No, wait, whatever happened to that? Getting the jab might be kind of like getting warm blankets with smallpox in them in the middle of January on native lands back before Uncle Stan fully landed. No, I'm not a denier. I'm just confused why so many would side with the colonizer as if Pfizer and these other companies actually give a f about anything other than their numbers. And no, I'm not anti that, I'm pro observation. I got no tin hat. I'm just asking questions, seeking answers, taking time, attacking each other's characters for differing paradigms, lack spine. Do what's good for you. I'm gonna do what's mine. And all this virtual signal, becoming so glorified, purpose-driven minds just got homogenized. And yes, we are a village, but that takes self-ownership, self-responsibility, autonomy, not codependency or deferring to all authorities, absolute authority. Because really, there's only one authority, that's source, not man. If we're so afraid of death, we stop living. How is that the plan? That's not a place I'm trying to find the human spirit. No. And yes, I've lost friends and family many times for many reasons, in many circumstances, including this. But a world where we've been taught to fear each other in this way, makes that threat endless. And if this was indeed lab created, how does that change things? The last two years have been strange days, drowning in information, sound bites, and skewed data, flip-flops, neuro-linguistic programming, maybe we don't know everything. There's a lot of disillusionment coming for a lot of souls who gave an awful lot of power away to things outside themselves. And that's on either side of the fence. Yet nature provides everything we need, and we need her. She doesn't necessarily need us. While we were locked up inside, glued to our TVs, she's out here waiting for all of us to get free. Maybe the real disease is that we wandered a bit too far from the garden for the sake of the modern and the constant progress and profit at all costs might actually be the problem. Then the great pause came. Maybe we were never taught the, what true health actually is, bombarded with poison since we were kids, and science in the form that it's taking may not be the answer for everything, for everyone. People neglected like children under toxic parenting, locked down, go to your room, you're grounded for existing on this would-be prison planet that's still a garden. You don't need to wait for a pardon. You're a part of something bigger than all of this. Thank you guys so much. We saw it here first. At United We Stand. And United We Stand. So, um, I want to give an invitation to y'all this Wednesday at Castle Deleuze. We're doing another screening with BTS, breakouts, some sense making as a community. I think it's really important that one thing that COVID showed us is that we need to meet in small groups and build impermeable coherence. And then we start to meet each other and these concentric rings of coherence start to meet. This is how we gradually tip the scales. Uh, 
I want you to text or call someone that you love that you lost through the pandemic based on ideology or belief and let them know that you still love them. Thank you very much. Sure, sure. Big love, brother, big love. Come on, give a little bit more love than that. Can I get that? Yeah, that's a lot of work and a lot of energy. Got to give love to the people who are sharing.